factorial the the factorial concept is very important because most of the problems related to permutations and combinations are related to factorial so let's see what is factorial the essentiality of permutations and combinations now we define factorial generally denoted for a positive integer n factorial is defined for a positive integer n where we denote the factorial of n by n factorial this is read as n factorial so this is read as n factorial and denoted with n exclamation mark out here and n factorial is defined as 1 factorial if n is equal to 1 and this is n times n minus 1 factorial if n is greater than 1 as how we understand n factorial so the two ways of understanding n factorial one is this is 1 factorial if n is equal to 1 and this is n times of this if n is greater than 1 so let's see how we can understand this more clearly through the example problems suppose i wanted to define n 3 factorial then in this case i understand that n is equal to 3 which is greater than 1 therefore to find 3 factorial i use this with this because n is greater than 1 n being equal to 3 so using this formula n factorial is n times n minus 1 factorial so 3 factorial will be 3 times 3 minus 1 factorial which comes out to be 3 times 2 factorial is how we get but again since n is 2 here which is greater than 1 i again use the second case of the formula n factorial for n greater than 1 n equal to 2 greater than 1 implies this will be 3 times 2 times of 2 minus 1 factorial this is using this definition is how we get it then further simplifying this 3 times of 2 times 2 minus 1 which is 1 factorial is finally where this is equal to 1 n is equal to 1 implies I use the first case where n equal to 1 implies n factorial is 1 factorial which is 1 that is I get this to be 1 1 factorial is identified that is my 1 factorial is read as 1 factor equal to 1 using this case so 1 factor equal to 1 implies this will be equal to 3 times 2 times this being equal to 1 is how we understand therefore I get this to be 3 times of 2 which is 6 so finally my 3 factorial is with the value 6 using the basic definition of n factorial so this is how we find the factorial of a value by constructing through the different process now there's an important thing to note that every time I use the factorial I see that the numbers consecutively decrease by one unit until they reach one therefore my n factorial is defined as n times n minus 1 n minus 2 n minus 3 3 2 and finally 1 is how I understand the n factorial using the concept that is when I find phi factorial I can directly reduce this as 5 4 3 2 and 1 until I reach the factorial up to 1 so when I find the factorial I decrease the consecutive numbers in the product until I reach 1 decreasing by 1 unit each time and hence phi factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and n factorial is n times n minus 1 n minus 2 times 3 2 1 is how I understand the n factorial using the basic definition of case 1 n equal to 1 case 2 n greater than 1 now it is very important in understanding 0 factorial because there is many uh, there are many debates going on in mathematics researchers that 0 factorial is 1 and some of them say 0 factorial is not equal to 1 but Finally, by convention, we conclude that 0 factorial is assumed to be 1 until and unless it is disproved that this is equal to 1. 
we assume by convention 0 factorial is equal to 1. There is no proof attached. So fundamental principle of counting is very important because it is a rule of counting process through which the permutation and combination problems are approached. So it is very important for the student to know the fundamental or the basic principle of counting before the permutation or combinations are introduced in the form of counting through arranging and selection. So let's see what does the fundamental principle of counting says out here. To revisit the example problem of the trousers and sheds, let me say that there are, this is a trouser and this is a shirt or let me say there's one more, one more trouser and one more shirt. And next, so on and so forth, let me say there are M sheds So, in this way, I want to take totally there are M shirts and N trousers is how I take the entire concept. So, if I assume that there are M shirts and N trousers on the whole, then the question here is in how many ways can I wear the shirts and trousers in pace is the biggest question out here. So let's see how the fundamental principle of counting is used in case of this example problem. Suppose this is S1, S2, S3 or shirt M and this is S2 and SM and this is trouser 1, trouser 2, so on and so forth till trouser N because there are N trousers. Then I see that in the previous case of three shirts and three trousers here, my shirt one, I can connect with N trousers. So each of the shirt one can be wore with N different trousers. So there are N ways through which I can do that because each shirt with N trousers can be wore in N ways is how I do this. Similarly, my second shirt S2 if I want to wear with each of the trousers, I can do that also in n different ways because I can wear the, this with this with this totally in n ways because there are n trousers through which I can wear one shirt and n trousers. This is possible in n ways. Now similarly, my shirt 3, if I wear with each of the trousers totally being n trousers can be done in n ways. So similarly, if I proceed, then I see that my last shirt, which is SM, also can be worn with T-shirts, T1, with trousers T1, T2, so on and so forth, till TN in N ways. Now, when I add all these, I get that each of the shirt, which can be worn with N different trousers in N ways, N ways, N ways, has totally m shirts which can be wore in therefore total number of ways each of them being distinct therefore total number of ways of wearing shirts and trousers in pace is n plus n each of n n added so that till m times because the totally m of the shirts which are combined with n trousers in n ways in m possible times so this n plus n plus n till m times gives me n into m that says mn different ways.